All right, thank you. So I'm gonna be talking today about low spoon leadership, which is for people in marginalized communities, how you can, if you have an idea for a project or event or something you wanna start or get involved with, but think to yourself, gosh, I really don't have the spoons for that. Um, this is gonna give you some tips and tricks for how to uh, manage your spoons in order to be able to contribute to society like that. And as a quick content note before we get started, um, I do love cats, so we're gonna have a lot of cat pictures in my slide deck. <laughs> yep, I didn't think that would be a problem. <laughs> um, so a little bit about myself to start with. Um, I'm a security engineer at Google, um, where I work on various data protection technologies and securing uh, private user data. Um, I'm not gonna be talking about anything directly work-related today, but um, I have in my spare time, or 20% time at work, gotten involved with various projects, um, led, for example, the creation of an internal conference, um, which at first I didn't really think I was able to or had the time and energy to do, but once I really discovered I was able to, realize just how much power um, and ability I had to make a really huge difference in people's lives. So I'm hoping that some of you get out of this talk uh, the ability to do that yourself. Um, I'm gonna be talking today both about um, spoons in general, which ones you have versus you don't have. Um, introducing a concept I like to think of as spoon debt, um, as well as in the second half of the talk, um, give you some tips and tricks on how to spend what uh, few spoons you do have wisely and avoid any pitfalls for wasting spoons. So first of all, before I get started, um, I've been using the term spoons in a figurative, not literal, like the utensil sense. Does everyone know what I mean when I talk about spoons that way? Um, I see some hands, but some um, who don't. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Spoon theory, as we, some people in the um, queer community call it, is a theory that was created by Christine Miserandino, um, who has a um, chronic condition lupus, and she was using uh, the idea of spoons as sort of a currency, or that you have so many of them per day to spend on tasks. Um, even as simple as getting out of bed or taking a shower, things that many people who aren't in marginalized groups and who are able-bodied kind of take for granted, but that aren't things you take for granted if you're um, really low on energy for one reason or another. So if you only have, let's say, 10 spoons a day to use um, and you know, getting out of bed takes two, getting dressed takes an additional one. By the time you add all those things up, you may not really have any leftover to be able to do things that uh, are sort of um, in addition to what you just need to get by. And I do wanna differentiate two categories of spoons that you sort of don't have. One is that you just don't have them in the first place because um, you're, you have a medical condition or part of a marginalized group. Like for example, being a transgender woman, I'm going to be dealing with all sorts of um, transphobia in society. I can't really do very much about that. Um, so some of my spoons are going to be going to dealing with that. But there's also some spoons that you maybe have, but sort of are allocated for uh, things that are important to you, like if you have a partner or significant other that you're, you spend a lot of time and energy on, uh, you may have family members, either chosen or biological, who you really care about, and those are things that you technically have a choice about whether to spend your spoons on, but at the same time, they're so important to you that you really don't view them as things that you have the luxury to spend on other things. Um, and in addition to that, you may have, if you're privileged enough to have spoons left over once you've taken care of the things you really need for day-to-day -day survival, um, sometimes even if you have those spoons left over, you may wind up uh, using them not as wisely or wasting them on um, 
things that aren't really as important to you or valuable. So for example, if I stayed up until two in the morning last night playing games when I should be getting enough rest in advance of my talk, um, that's an example of spoons that I've wasted on things that really aren't as important to me. Um, just a hypothetical example, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but the reason why I bring this up is that sometimes people spend spoons that they're not even really consciously aware of without really thinking about it. And the more you can sort of be mindful and aware of where you're devoting your energy, the better you're able to avoid wasting spoons that you could otherwise spend on things that really do matter more to you. Um, I also want to introduce the concept I call spoon debt, which is the idea that normally when you think of debt, you may think of financial debt or technical debt in the open source or um, tech community. But I think the same model where you can wind up with the debt that you have to pay off later and that it costs a lot of interest in the form of either like monetary interest or um, uh, dealing with more technical issues that would have been avoided if you had spent more time on designing better software to begin with. Um, in the same way, apply to spoons, because if, you know, for example, you let dirty dishes pile up in your kitchen, that might be an example of cleanliness or organizational debt. Um, some people may actually have, uh, you know, sleep debt, that's another example. Um, you know, if you haven't spent a lot of time with people important to your life, that's, you can sort of think of it as a debt that you want to pay back to the person in your life you care about, um, things like that. And it's important that even though sometimes you, there are reasons why you want to go into debt or you are really need to in order to get the things out of life you want, uh, it's m really important to be aware of when you're going into debt because it really is effectively taking away spoons from your future self. And as I said, you often have to pay interest on it. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so as an exercise to you folks as the listeners, I really encourage you to think about some places in life where you may have accumulated some spoon debt uh, and ask some questions like, did I actually make a conscious decision to incur this or was it just something that happened really without thinking about it? Uh, what is the interest that you're paying on it? Like not having enough um, uh, space in your sink to be able to do something if you're letting your dishes pile up. I mean, that's just one small example that I'm using, but there's plenty of other areas in your life where if you don't take care of something in a timely manner, it just bubbles up and um, starts impacting your life in other ways. Um, and also, do you have any plans to pay down your debt in the future? Um, if you don't have a really good plan for that, then you are probably going to be living in debt for some time to go along. And the more debt you have racked up that you're paying interest on, the less you're going to have to be able to spend on you know, really awesome projects or open source uh, contributions or whatever it is that's important to you uh, to be able to do. So getting um, into now the second part of my talk, I want to talk a little bit more about some tips for how to better uh, manage your spoons and how to kind of avoid uh, pitfalls for wasting spoons. Um, one thing that I have found very important to me is to think about really what's important to you or what motivates you. Um, if you're thinking about really budgeting a lot of spoons to work on a particular project, um, I'd really encourage you to give some thought about whether it's in line with something that you're motivated to work on, particularly if it's something that's a free time project or that you don't have to work on or need to work on uh, because it's part of your career or your income stream relies on it, if that's something that applies to you. Um, so if it's something that really is a free time project, is it something that's in line with your interests and motivations? Um, I recommend this because I've definitely done work before that 
I just really wasn't passionate about, I didn't really care about, and it wasn't my best work by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so this also goes for projects where you may have been volunteered to work on something and had a hard time saying no. Um, those are also cases where it's really easy to wind up in spoon debt without even making a conscious choice and learning how to say no to other people in times when you really need to um, set a boundary is really important to do. Um, another thing when working on a project of some sort is to sort of think about what is it that you're really trying to accomplish? What problem are you trying to solve? Just like it's a good idea to, when you're starting a big software engineering project, to write a design doc and think about how how you want to build it, um, what are, what's in scope, what are non-goals of the project, things like that. It's also a good idea to really think about before getting involved with something, what really are you trying to accomplish with it? Um, so it really is, um, as in a good thing to do, uh, come up with a clear sort of problem statement with what you're trying to accomplish. If you can't really clearly articulate in a sentence or two exactly what you want to accomplish with the project, that's kind of a red flag that you may not really have a good idea of what it is that you uh, really want to contribute or why it's meaningful to you. Uh, also, speaking as a little bit of a uh, recovering perfectionist, so to speak, uh, a common pattern I've ran into is wanting to make sure any project I lead and take ownership for is something that's really amazing because, you know, if I'm going to do something, I got to do it right. And anything worth doing is probably worth overdoing in some ways as well. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't think that's really a healthy attitude to take all the time. Um, I think it was Elizabeth this morning who was talking about how uh, expecting perfection or expecting uh, young people to be perfect really is a toxic thing for them. The same way expecting perfection from yourself is also really being toxic to yourself. And you're not going to make 100% of the people happy 100% of the time. And it's really um, un unrealistic goals that you're going to, at least from my experience, uh, spend a lot of spoons on when you could be focusing them more on the key uh, parts of the project that you really want to focus on. So don't let the scope of the project you're working on um, kind of bubble up over time. Um, another sort of corollary to this is try to plan as much as you can in advance. Um, the more planning you do ahead of time, the less you're going to have to worry about things the day of or later on. Um, so you can almost view planning-related debt for something that you're planning in advance as something you also want to be aware of and not accrue. Um, having said that, I do want to add a caveat to that when it comes to inclusivity. Um, Wait a sec. I mean, I want to be inclusive of those dogs here, but wait, that's not right. Ah, there we go, much better. <laughs> There's my cat picture. <laughs> so, um, like I was saying before, scope creep often happens due to a lack of foresight or planning. But if there's something that really is key to a project, you want to work on that ahead of time. And inclusivity is something that many people make the mistake of not thinking of from the beginning, and then towards the end realizing, oh darn, I, 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 our venue for this event isn't wheelchair accessible, or gosh, it's so expensive to hire a stenographer and a sign language interpreter. Um, where are we going to find that in our budget? Uh, and as a side note, I um, want to give a shout out to our stenographer and uh, sign language interpreter who have been doing a great job all day long. Yep. Um, so if you want to make um, an event inclusive, which is something that I, I don't have to tell you why it's important, I think you all know that by now, uh, really start planning early. Don't go into debt um, planning things 
are features that you need really to make an inclusive environment. Make sure you work out your code of conduct ahead of time, things like that. Another thing that I found working on projects over time is that if you work on something long enough, you'll often feel sort of a sense of ownership over it, that it's your creation, your baby, and have a hard time letting go of it after a while. Um, that said, I think even though it's counterintuitive at first, being able to step back from a project over time once, it's, um, once you've really accomplished your mission with it, it really is a good thing because it means that you're not, um, the project isn't dependent on you personally. So if you do wind up needing to take a break, um, you know, are feeling burnt out on it, or as I like to say with the spoons analogy, um, that you're so in debt in spoons that you're having to declare bankruptcy in effect, that the project won't end just because you're not there to personally oversee it. Um, don't become irreplaceable because that's really just asking for trouble. And in a lot of ways, the most successful projects I've had have been ones that people have been so passionate about that they've been willing to take over and take a leadership role in continuing even without my presence. That's a sign that you've done something really good, that you've inspired other people, not something that uh, you know, is just a project that really isn't accomplishing much. And before I end, I want to um, present a quote. This is from um, a friend of mine who I met at a gaming event, Half Coordinated. Um, for those of you who don't know, he's a uh, video game speedrunner who, despite having a medical condition that means um, he can't use his right hand for uh, playing games, he's still able to you know, do a really amazing job um, completing video games really quickly. And he said, that, you know, in effect, um, I'll let you uh, read above, but, you know, don't think that just because you um, don't have the spoons or you're, coming, or you're coming from a place where you're having to spend a lot of spoons just to survive and stay alive, if you have additional ones, you really can do a, probably a lot more than you might think with them. That said, it, it also requires being really judicious with how you spend your spoons. And while it's important to push yourself to do better, you also don't really want to waste spoons or do things that don't um, get you the results you want and get you off track. But if you really do stick with the project and you're able to devote enough spoons and manage them wisely, I think you really, as half coordinated would say, you really would be surprised with how much um, you can accomplish in the world, even if it may seem like you just don't have the energy or you're telling yourself, I can't, or I don't have the spoons for it. Um, so with that, um, that's all I have planned for the talk, and I will take questions if anybody has questions. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, um, thank you for <laughs> your talk. Um, I was just gonna ask you if you had any specific advice, um, maybe things that you do for spoon management or avoiding wasting spoons. <laughs> yeah, um, I should probably start by leveling a little bit with you in that I am by no means a master at avoiding wasting spoons. Um, I am human and not perfect, and I've definitely wasted my fair share of spoons in the past. So this is going to come across as a do as I say, not as I do type of um, advice, because really, who hasn't wasted some time or energy in the past? Um, but what I would sort of encourage you to do is, or I'm sorry, um, let me step back a step. Uh, one thing that I have done that really helps me kind of avoid wasting spoons is to really take some time to take an inventory of what spoon debts I've had. Where do, am I really exhausted? Be sort of mindful of how you are. Am I feeling tired? Am I feeling hungry? Do I need to take some time to 
you know, get away from this conference with a lot of extroverts and I'm relatively shy. So really being self-aware of where you've spent your spoons and where you're kind of in debt or in trouble is really key to being able to avoid um, incurring the types of debt that is going to um, kind of make you um, less effective on the things that really do, um, I'm sorry, the things that are important to you uh, in life. Yeah, hopefully that answers your question a little bit. Thanks. Uh, thank you. This is an interesting topic that I hadn't really, I wasn't familiar with this idea. Makes sense. Do you have any um, tips or ways that you've been successful kind of explaining this concept to people in passing when you're sort of like, you can identify that something is beyond your spoon capacity? I don't know. Um, and to, to sort of concisely, politely explain that to someone. Yeah, I know um, we sort of inform, uh, many people in the queer community especially or other marginalized groups use spoons um, kind of as a shorthand for it, but it's not a concept that people universally um, think of. Uh, so what I, I guess I don't have necessarily the best advice because it really does explain that, but maybe just explaining um, the analogy behind spoons in that you know, some of the things that you've already committed to do, or I guess that's not really a good answer to your question, and I'm not, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure, because explaining things like this without spending, you know, like 15 or 20 minutes going over the topic really is difficult, but I do think it's important maybe not so much to, you know, explain why you don't have the spoons for something, but to still set a boundary and saying, you know, no, I can't do that, and not feel like you necessarily owe the person an explanation. Um, that's one of the key things to setting boundaries with your time and your spoons, that, that they really are yours. And just because somebody asks you for a favor, particularly ones that involve, you know, expending emotional labor or other things, um, sometimes it's okay to say, no, I can't do that. And even if it sounds kind of mean or to another person, um, I would really encourage you to think of it more as setting your own boundaries and not committing to something that would push you in debt that you're not comfortable with. Okay, thank okay. you so much, Emily. Thank you.